Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and for today's tutorial, we're going to take a look at our playlist, the Practice Models playlist on the Too Tall Toby YouTube channel. And we're going to take a look at this one here, the Bearing Rest. But to mix it up a little bit today, I think I'm going to do this tutorial in On Shape. Ow! So before I start the timer on this challenge, I just wanted to let everybody know that I have been on a journey learning Onshape this year. Here I'm looking at my Onshape user interface. This is called the Document Manager. This is where we store all of our parts and assemblies and drawings in Onshape. And everything I've been doing on this journey so far has been using the totally free version of Onshape. You can find that over at onshape.com slash free. And so if you're interested in learning Onshape and you want to see what I've done so far, check out the Onshape YouTube channel because they've helped me put together my own playlist over there where I'm documenting my journey. Everything from signing up for that free account to creating my first extrusion to creating my first part that I'm 3D printing and now getting into creating some tutorials and sharing some quick tips for all Onshape users. So be sure to check out that playlist. That'll show you everything that I've done so far. And it's a great way for you to maybe learn a new 3D CAD system because you can just start learning right away using the totally free version of Onshape. In fact, if you wanted to follow along with on this tutorial, you could also use that totally free account over at onshape.com slash free. So with that all being said, let's start the timer. And as always, whenever I'm doing one of these tutorials, I like to think to myself, what would be my starting plane? What would be my starting profile? And to answer that question, I like to first look over the model and look for things like, is the model symmetric? And in the case of this model, it is symmetric. We can see we've got center line symmetry here, which means we could probably just draw half of the model and then mirror it when we're done. So as far as starting plane and starting profile goes, I'll probably start out by creating a rectangle like this, maybe a second rectangle that looks something like this, maybe a third rectangle that comes over to this overall shape. Then I would create maybe this upper section here again as a rectangle, and I would finish off by maybe creating a circle. So pretty straightforward geometry, a lot of rectangles, a lot of circles. Let's get into on shape and see how this is done. But of course, if you're using a different CAD system, it's still going to be the same basic methodology, just some differences as far as shortcuts and whatnot go. So here we go. We can see that we're now in on shape. I'm going to choose to create a new document and I'll call this bearing rest and create that new document. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do here is just go into my options and I'm gonna say that I wanna change my workspace units because I wanna be working in inches, not millimeters as I'm working on this challenge. I'm gonna to go to the front plane and I'm gonna press the letter S here on my keyboard to begin a new sketch. Then I'm gonna press the letter N to get normal too. Now, if I press the S key again, I can choose to create a rectangle and I'm gonna create a rectangle here at a distance of seven over two, since I'm gonna be mirroring this at the end, by a height of 1.25. Now I'm gonna create a second rectangle here. This one is gonna have a distance of nine over two by a height of 2.25. Now I'm gonna create a third rectangle. So let's get back into that rectangle command. We'll create a third rectangle here, start at the origin and come across here. And this rectangle is going to have a distance of 12.25 over two. And this rectangle is going to have a height of 5.25. There we go, there's our third rectangle. Let's make one more rectangle here. This one I think will start right here. So S key rectangle, we'll start right here and we will come up to uh, this height over here. And so this thing will just have a width of 5.25 divided by two. Alrighty, and now for our final feature, we'll create a circle and this circle is going to have a diameter of four so that it has a radius of two. So the geometry itself is pretty simple once you figure out your game plan and you're able to get in there and create that basic geometry. Let's start turning that geometry into solid geometry using the S key and jumping into the extrude command in on shape. And I don't want to extrude every single element of this sketch. I just want to extrude maybe uh, this rectangular region here and this lower rectangular region here. And that's going to come out to a distance of 4.75. And there we go. There is our first extrusion in on shape. Now, the next extrusion we create is going to reuse this sketch. So to make things a little easier, I'm going to choose to show this sketch and I'm going to choose to extrude. And this time I'm going to extrude uh, this region and say this region here. 
And actually, you know what? I'll save that region for just a little bit later. But that first region there is going to come out to a distance of 0 0.75. Just looking at my drawing to make sure that that is correct. Now I'm going to create another extrusion. So S key extrude. I'll reselect in my original sketch. Choose this region here. And that's going to come out to a distance of 2.75. Alrighty, excellent. And now I need to do a cut extrude. So once again in Onshape, I do an extrude, but here in the extrude menu, I'm gonna choose remove. And the region I'm gonna remove is gonna be this region here. Now that's obviously not gonna start at that sketch plane, but instead is gonna start from an offset. So I'll say that I'm gonna be using a starting offset here and that that is gonna be offset from an entity. That'll be this face here. And that cut extrude is one inch. So that is already set up to be correct. So I can hit the green check mark there and now I'm ready to move on with my design. So I guess the next feature that I'll create here will be a draft feature. I'll choose the draft command here in on shape. I'll choose this surface here as a neutral plane. I'll choose this face for the draft and 10 degrees for the draft angle. And that preview looks pretty good. So I can hit the green check mark. And now I'm ready to finish up this side of the model by creating some fillets. So I'll do an S key here and jump into the fillet command. And I'm going to say that I want to fill at this edge and I want that edge to have a radius of 0 0.9. I'm going to press enter once to update the preview. Then I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to press enter. And what that does is it finishes the command, but it puts me right back into a fillet command. So now I can pick this edge here and I can make that 0 0.5. And I can press enter once to update the preview and then shift enter. And that shift enter is kind of a magic key in on shape because it lets us immediately reinitiate the fillet command. So now for this last one here, I'm going to pick this edge and that's going to have a radius of 1.75. Enter, enter, finish out that command. I no longer need this sketch so I can hide it. I can hide all my planes by pressing the letter P on my keyboard. And the last thing I'm going to do here is just choose to mirror the entire part. So this is a mirror all about this face here and I can hit the green check mark. Now I need to assign a custom material and the material that is called out here or the material density on the print is called out here at 0 0.2, I'm sorry, 2700 kilograms per cubic meter. And so in order to get that in on shape, what I should do is I should first go in here to my options and go to my workspace units and just change that back to millimeters, hit the green check mark. And then I can go down to the part studio here, right mouse button and say, assign a material to this model. And that material is going to be a custom material. I'll call this uh, TTT-1060. And I'll say that it has a density of 0 0.0027. And once I do that, I can go down into this corner down here. And in this corner, way down here, what we've got is an option for mass properties. And so when I click on that option for mass properties, I can see that I've come up with a mass here. Oops, I'm sorry, this mass should be in pounds. So let me go back to my workspace units and change that to pounds. You know, ideally I would have a template and I would have materials. Uh, I'm gonna learn how to do that a little bit later. I'm still kind of in the beginning of my on shape journey, but let me just try that again with mass properties. Click on this part and it is coming up with a mass of 15.73 pounds. So let's take a look at our drawing challenge here on YouTube. I'm going to pause that at 643. I'm going to go to the very end of the, the uh, challenge and 15.73 is the correct answer. So, all right, I got it right. So now I could go down into the comments here and in the comments, I could say something like I did it in six minutes, 42 seconds, 43 seconds using on shape and add that comment and it looks like x dad s dad s dads s889 did it here in uh four minutes and 39 seconds so he beat me by a few minutes but that's all right i was still able to get it correct and getting the correct answer is far more important than speed so with that all being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed that tutorial. I hope that you learned a lot and I hope that they gave you some good exposure to Onshape. If you did enjoy the tutorial, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and uh, be sure to let me know down in the comments what you liked about this tutorial. And I will see everybody in the next one.